Hey, good day. It's Preso here, and welcome back to my shop. Have you ever had one of those jobs where you needed to put a, say, a socket-headed screw deep inside a piece of machinery, and you pick up your hex wrench or your Allen key, and you go to fit it in there, and you find that it's just completely covered in magnetized particles? Um, I'm pretty sure you get the idea. When I find myself in that situation, it's really frustrating. Um, I did buy one of those cheap uh, magnetizing, demagnetizing gadgets you see on eBay, and it was pretty much useless. I ended up magnetizing more tools than I was able to demagnetize using one of those. And I looked into the theory of it, and it works out that to effectively demagnetize something, what you need to do is to alternate the magnetic field between positive and negative rapidly and then you slowly need to reduce the effectiveness of that magnetic field. Now there are commercially available electric demagnetizing devices that use a basically a, a modified transformer and they cycle the magnetic field 50 times a second if you've got 50 hertz uh, mains electricity and the theory is once again you place the item to be demagnetized on that surface switch it on, cycles the magnetic field, and then it slowly decays the magnetic field and that um, cancels out any magnetic field in the tool. Now, it turns out that there are instructions for doing that. It looks highly dangerous. It, it, I don't like the idea of ma uh, messing around with the transformer and using mains electricity. Then I found out that you can do the same thing uh, with a physical magnetic field. And the device that I made is just a piece of mild steel and um, inside this plastic cap there are four rare earth magnets arranged as you see them there. I've just stuck these on the outside so you can see the arrangement but they come off and inside the same four magnets are inside this face here and you can see that um, anything magnetic will stick to that. And it turns out all you need to do is to be able to rotate this rapidly. The, oh, by the way, the, um, the magnets are arranged so that two of them in opposite positions on this end are uh, arranged with their positive um, poles facing outwards. The other two are arranged with their negative poles facing outwards. So as this rotates and passes the tool tip or whatever it is you want to demagnetize, it's first of all presented with a positive pole, then a negative, then a positive, then a negative. And if you can spin that rapidly enough, that has the effect of alternating the, the magnetic field. So uh, what I can show you here, and I, I do this quite often when you want to place a part in a piece of machinery and it's not very accessible. You can take a normal screwdriver and you can place it on a, a magnet. This once again is a rare, rare earth magnet or neodymium. Is that how you pronounce it? Don't know. Anyway, rare earth magnet. Place it on there and just simply cycle it past that magnetic pole. And you've got to lift it up and over each time you do this so that you don't cancel out the magnetic field. Now, if you do that often enough, it only takes, you know, five or six passes, you effectively magnetize that tool. So it will pick up a screw and that allows you to place the screw on the screwdriver tip, get it inside whatever you want to fit it into and hopefully get it started. So having magnetized that tool tip, it does the job, but then later on when you want to use it for other things, it gets really frustrating and annoying because it picks up all the magnetic particles on the end. So to be able to demagnetize that, that's where this little tool comes in. So I'll just demonstrate how that works. And remember this at the moment is magnetized. So we're gonna try to demagnetize that. And my Allen key, which is one of a set that's really badly affected. Interestingly, I, uh, my workshop is actually in a steel shed. So all the frames steel, it's got a concrete floor full of steel rebar 
And I read somewhere, I don't know how true this is, I read that if you get a lightning strike close to a building like that, it effectively creates a magnetic field in the whole structure. And then all of the tools, the metal tools or steel tools inside that structure, slowly pick up a magnetic field. Now, I don't know if that's true or not, but I have noticed that tools that I've had sitting in a rack for quite some time, and I haven't used them, I'll pick them up and they will be magnetised. So I don't know why that is, it's just one of life's mysteries, I suppose. So I put the DMAG tool in the spindle of my drill press. I've got the spindle set to run at its highest speed and I've just moved the table out of the way so I've got some space underneath here to work at. And uh, I'll use the screwdriver that I previously magnetised and we'll do that one first. So you can see that that is still magnetised so I haven't secretly done this off camera and demagnetised it or swapped screwdrivers and the idea is that you switch on your spindle Bring the tool up underneath, move it along, it will stick, but then you just slowly withdraw it. And that's now demagnetized. Now, it's not strong enough to pick up that screw, but I've got some uh, swarf and rubbish in the bottom of my drill press. I'll fish a bit out with that magnet. So there's the particles. And oh, it's picking up the odd one. It's a bit hard to tell though whether these are magnetized or whether it's the screwdriver tip. I'll do that one more time. So there's some swarf, and that's done it. All right. Oh yeah, it's picking it up, but it's nowhere near as strong as it was as it was before. Let's try the Allen key. So there's the swarf from the, the bottom of the machine. You can see that's well and truly magnetized at the moment. All right. So let's try that one. That one's done. So what's important here is that as you withdraw that tool and you're just starting to leave this surface here, you'll actually feel the magnetic pulsing. And you've got to just keep going, keep going, keep going, pull it away at least a foot or 300 millimeters, and then don't bring it back inside that magnetic field again. And if you do that, you effectively neutralize whatever magnetic poles you have in this tool. So, um, you know, for, for what it costs me, um, I reckon that tool's great. Uh, just keep it handy. Um, there's about $2 worth of magnets in there, a bit of scrap steel, and uh, whatever this is, I think it's poly polyethylene, but not sure. It could be nylon. It's just a bit of scrap that I had. And I think that is just. Um, had four pockets um, milled in the plastic part and I super glued the rare earth magnets into those four pockets and then I just press fitted the cap onto the steel body there. Now it might be more effective with aluminium for this part. I don't know whether the steel somehow short circuits the magnetic fields. It doesn't feel like it. Like you can actually feel that pulsing as I said. but somebody who knows more about physics than I 
do would probably tell you that we should use something non-magnetic for this part. Anyway, uh, for what it's worth, um, it's worth a try. Like I say, I was unwilling to have a go at anything that involved electricity and uh, I know those units are really effective and you can buy them, you can buy a commercially made one but they're like hundreds of dollars. So there it is, a DMAG tool, DIY, won't cost a lot. Thanks for watching.